Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here at the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for June 26, 2020, recorded around 4.18 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies, last updated as yesterday, not much has continued to change other than the developing cool neutral towards a La Nina Bay state out here in the Enso regions in the Eastern Pacific Basin. And in the tropical Pacific, we continue to notice the warming of the deep tropics in the main development region. Also, we're continuing to see a fairly substantial warming of positive anomalies out here in portions of the northwestern, northwestern subtropical Atlantic Basin. That continues to tell me that we are going to see building heights up here with a developing ridge of high pressure. And that's going to stick around all summer, late fall. And as these hurricanes develop out here in the main development region, as we get closer and closer to the peak of the hurricane season, which is on September 10th. These storms are less likely to get out here and recurve because there's going to be stronger than normal high pressures uh, setting up out here. And tropical systems can't move into that area of low pressure. There's going to be no areas of troughiness out here for these storms to get caught up and turn out eventually to sea. Now, that doesn't explicitly state that these storms still can't do that because some of them will but some of them, there is kind of this big question mark, lame question mark, but there is some questions as to what might happen down the road. And we don't have all those answers quite yet. But when we see these anomalies building up out here in the northwestern Atlantic, subtropical Atlantic Basin, these stronger positive anomalies well above the long-term average in cases about four to five degrees Celsius, above the long-term average that will indicate this ridge of high pressure that will casually develop as we go on throughout the next several months into the summer and fall months and that will prevent a lot of the so-called fish storms that turn way out to sea and don't really bother anything but marine interests so there is a big question mark as to what might happen across portions of the western atlantic basin here over the next several days again this is going to dictate where exactly these hurricanes will go over time as they develop out here in the MDR, which is above the long-term average. You know, again, just everything points towards a an above-average hurricane season this year, and there's nothing really that's going to significantly hinder that. Now, this does have some hindrance if this becomes a larger, expansive area of uh, these deeper positive anomalies. If this can chip away a lot more at this cooler subtropical Atlantic where this eventually just warms up, there is the potential that it could take a lot of the instability or some of the instability <clears throat> away from the main development region and favor the subtropical Atlantic as we've seen in the past few years. Uh, really beginning 2018, 2019, that's been the theme that the subtropical Atlantic has some more instability than the tropics actually do. And the deep tropics are not as favorable as the subtropical Atlantic. So that's something to keep an, keep an eye on as we head through the rest of the season. But all else being equal, the upper ocean heat content updated as of this morning is pretty interesting, needless to say. With a lot of the upper ocean heat content still favored out here in the Caribbean. But once you start getting up into these greens oranges, yellows, and reds. That's your higher uh, upper ocean heat content values, your warmer water at depth, <clears throat> and basically more latent heat release potential and potential for tropical cyclones to take advantage and strengthen in that environment, at least in the, in the thermodynamic environment, in the, in the ocean sense. But basically, much of the southwestern Atlantic Basin is now starting to heat up. Most of the central Atlantic Basin, and even out here, in the southern portions of the main development region where we're starting to get the intertropical convergence zone to lift further to the north. That's now lifting a lot of that heat also to the north. That, that heat uh, release is now heading further to the north. It's allowing this more expansive area to warm and get that warmer water going at depth. And you're starting to see that now. And there's some tropical activity to take advantage of that environment. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Again, looking at the larger scale sea surface temperatures, this is the actual sea surface temperatures coming off the CDAS methodology from tropicaltippets.com. Valid or initialized as of 7 o'clock this morning, you notice most of the southwestern Atlantic Basin, the southern main development region into the Gulf Stream. Most of this area is now favorable, even a pocket here of about 30 Celsius out here in the western Atlantic Basin, the southwestern Atlantic 
very favorable, at least on thermodynamic sense, for tropical cyclones to take advantage of that. And with ongoing time, it's only going to be a matter of time before these tropical cyclones or these tropical waves come off of the uh, coast of Africa and really get their seedlings and uh, rooted out here and really start to take advantage of this more favorable uh, thermodynamic environment. It's only a matter of time, and the time's coming up pretty quickly. In the eastern Pacific Basin, <clears throat> not a whole lot to talk about except for tropical depression bores. It did become a brief tropical storm yesterday uh, afternoon and evening, but maximum sustained winds once again felt about 35 miles per hour, remaining this as a tropical depression. It retains Boris because it once became a tropical storm, so it does retain the name Tropical Depression Boris. But regardless, this is expected to head off towards the north, the north northwest here, or, or northwest here, over the next several days or so before finally turning on out to sea uh, over the next several days or so, really continuing on its path out to sea. Not really doing much out here. Again, this is going to be south of the Hawaiian Islands here. Not much. If any impact to the Hawaiian Islands at all, maybe some increased surf here, but nothing significantly. Again, this is expected to become post-tropical over the next 48 hours as this becomes a remnant low and eventually just kind of dissipates out here due to the strong uh, drier air and the vertical wind shear across that area. So after hour 72, this is expected to dissipate, not really be of any uh, Con consequence across that area. If you take a look here at the visible satellite, this is from GO-16 and the Makata satellite uh, data here, or GO-17 rather. And again, you notice this very exposed center. This is the center of circulation right in here, our low-level center, our LLC basically. And it does have some convection off towards the north and west of, of it, kind of giving this almost comma, little comma-shaped cloud feature to it, but nothing very significant. Again, you notice all of this uh, kind of the cumulus out here, the autocumulus, basically suggesting a very unfavorable area for development, very dry, stable air in the atmosphere. And you can even see that out here, very dry, stable air that's getting ingested in along with the strong vertical wind shear. And you can see that represented here on the water vapor satellite imagery. Very dry, stable air that's been occurring out here over the last several days. And again, your bigger plume of moisture is actually over here across portions of the southeastern Pacific. Nothing really significantly going on here over the Pacific over the next several days or so. Again, there's only really two now systems that we have to monitor again. You remember how it turned out the other day, you know, a couple of days ago, we were watching basically this whole fruit basket, if you will, of systems that could develop in the Eastern Pacific Basin. But what's occurring there is is there's just too much energy. There's too much competing uh, for cyclone development and nothing's really able to consolidate and bundle. And as such, we've basically fallen to our uh, Invest 94E, which has a 10% chance over the next five days. And then what will be likely Invest 95E, which only has a 40% chance over the next five days. So very not necessarily hostile conditions, but unfavorable conditions over the next several days. No real deep concerns for any of the resort areas, Cabo San Lucas, the Mexican uh, coastline out here in Central America. No deep concerns that I'm seeing over the next several days for those areas as well. No significant areas. If we shift out here to the GO-16 satellite, this is coming from the COD uh, meteorology website, College of Page website. Again, notice all of this dry, stable Saharan air, the second Saharan air layer that's making its way into the islands right now, uh, over there into the Caribbean. The second portion of, well, really the first portion of the Saharan air event over portions of the Gulf Coast states over here, over towards the northward. Uh, again, not really seeing a significant hindrance in shower and thunderstorm activity. Still seeing a lot of this. Again, that's mostly diurnally driven along with the Florida sea breeze, you know, creating thunderstorms. It's mostly diurnally driven, but our temperatures here actually are... Uh, our temperature coming off our weather station right now is reading 108 degrees on the feel like temperature. So it's very important to understand that these are not really causing any deep concerns other than extreme heat. You know, in the Saharan air, it is particulate matter that is suspended. So it can cause some, uh, you know, breathing problems if you have any pre-existing, uh, pre um, you know, 
respiratory problems rather and that's going to continue over the next several days or so as we get this other push of saharan air that's going to be moving across the deep tropics here over the next several days or so again you do notice our deep tropical waves that are out here more moisture involved in the atmosphere as i take a sip of water there my throat's getting clogged <laughs> it's probably all that sun there but again <clears throat> for the most part you do notice that these tropical waves are coming off at a pretty low latitude here and again these are the ones that we have to pay attention to and there is some chance for a, a, this strong tropical wave out here to end up developing into a very brief tropical cyclone we'll take a look at that here in just a second in the eastern pacific basin once again nothing really significant again no significant land concerns here over the next several days or so now, this is coming from Eric Webb off of Twitter, and again, he's a really prominent meteor, uh, tropical meteorologist. Again, he highlights this very well. This is coming from Eric Webb once again. Again, what's happening here, this is the European control model. This is the 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly. Basically, you're taking a look at these reddish and orangish anomalies, which indicate the sinking air in this part of the area right here, including the eastern Pacific Basin. Then you have these more positive uh, favorability anomalies here, these greenish and bluish anomalies uh, correlating to this area in the world over here, over the Western Atlantic and the uh, African areas over there that will typically favor more rising air in the atmosphere. And Eric Webb really highlights this well. These are actually the convectively coupled Kelvin waves that will pass through uh, portions of the Western Atlantic basins here over the next several weeks or so that's going to inc increase the favorability of tropical cyclones as they develop or increase the favorability for the stronger tropical waves to end up developing into something here over the next several days or so. You notice this this is actually going down with time. We end up here at June 11th uh, or July 11th down here. This starts at June 27th. Again, this correlates roughly to the Western Atlantic Basin and over the next several days or so, in, including the next couple of weeks, that these convectively coupled Kelvin waves are going to be passing over, setting up a brief window of opportunity for tropical cyclones to potentially develop either in the main development region or the western portions of the Atlantic Basin as we set up a standing wave over here. And what a standing wave basically represents is these favorability of rising air in the atmosphere. They're not moving anywhere. These are basically just rooted down in a specific area of the world and they don't really move and that really amplifies as we head towards july these anomalies get down here towards the minus two and you know minus two to minus three uh basically in the velocity potential and that favors very strong rising air in the atmosphere and even out here in portions of the western atlantic basin including africa you know, some of these areas are, you know, minus one and a half to minus two. And that really favors a big chunk of these tropical waves to get significantly amplified as they come across Africa and then into the main development region with not a lot of suppressing air. You know, only the really some little itty bitty areas of suppress uh, suppression uh, over the next couple of the weeks or so in portions of the Western Atlantic Basin. But again there's a really big sign that there is going to be a window of favorability uh, coming up here over the next several weeks or so in the Atlantic main development region. And that's something to watch. And as such, this is taking a look off the weathernerds.org site. This is the European Ensemble uh, mean, mean Sea Level Pressure Forecast outside the hour 144 time frame. And all of these tracks in here are indicating the dip in sea level pressure and its correlating tracks basically taking a look at tropical cyclone tracks over the next coming weeks and there is the window of opportunity out here in the southern main development region for a small system to develop again that would roughly correlate to this system out here in the main development region as it generally tracks off towards the west northwest here over the next several days or so and again with this convectively coupled kelvin wave passing over this indian uh, this standing wave this iod uh, really setting up here across portions of the Atlantic Basin in Africa that's only going to amplify these stronger tropical waves to come off. And if you take a look here at the 12Z GFS forecast, this is coming off of tropicaltippets.com. Again, nothing really, but you do notice out here at hour 48, there is a very small itty bitty system out here in the, the southwestern Atlantic Basin. Now, 
whatever does form, and I, I want to emphasize this clearly, whatever does form out here in the uh, you know Atlantic Main Development Region is not going to be of a significant land concern. There's not going to be a very strong land concern problem with this. This will be a very short-lived, brief tropical system as there's a lot of dusty Saharan air out here, stronger uh, stronger vertical wind shear that's blowing uh, these storms, you know, in any convection away from anything. It would disrupt a low-level center and low-level circulation. So the models are picking up on something but it, it might be a little too small for the global models to, to resonate and really resolve in the, the model fields because these model fields, they're big, they're expansive. They're not these little uh, specific models for hurricanes. They can't necessarily resolve a very small circulation very well. However, it is showing up in the model fields, especially in the GFS and the European ensembles, that there could be a small little compact system out there. Notice these little bumps in the isobars out here. This is the lines of, of constant pressure. And these are little bumps in the isobars suggesting a tropical wave axis that would be positioned through here at hour 140, uh, 48, or I'm sorry, hour 48. This is valid as of 7 a.m. Sunday. Notice this little wave axis that resonates right here, and that's very important. Now, shifting over to the European forecast model out to the hour 72 time frame, not really much. There's not much in this field. Maybe the slightest little bump and pressures along here along a potential wave axis. However, if you go back to the zero Z, uh, the zero Z European forecast model out to hour 72, it was much more well defined out here. So the models are coming and going with model support, and it only resonates really that there's still significant uncertainty. However, some of the modeling, including in the European ensembles, have resonated this a lot more. About 63% of the Zero Z ensemble members were picking up on some sort of system out here. So that is way more than what we had yesterday at only 14%. So it certainly has a resignation at least its footprint is in there. And if something were to develop, it would be almost unprecedented this far to the east and south as there has not been any June systems that have formed within 200 nautical miles of where this system could form. Just a little tidbit there. So very interesting, very intriguing, but this is not going to be of any significant land concern, no land concern at, at all even. So all of this, all of this though would indicate and strengthen and harden the fact that this will be an above average hurricane season if something will, were to develop out here that's you know given all of the saharan air that's ongoing across that area that only resonates a higher and higher potential for something to come along later in the season and really take advantage of the environment and real quickly this is the eastern pacific view from the from the 12z uh, or 12z european on or european for operational model again nothing going on across this part of the world here over the next several days or so no significant land concerns for the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas, the Baja of California, the California, you know, the Mexican coastline, uh, the Gulf of California, absolutely nothing to look at in terms of potential landfalls. There could be some tropical systems that try to get their, you know, developing, you know, seedlings out here in the Eastern Pacific. But again, there's a lot of competing factors that have actually hindered development over the next several uh, days or so. So. Not really a lot going on in either basin, but the Eastern Pacific is getting a little bit more active. We do have a couple of areas to monitor, and the Atlantic Basin is coming to life here. And again, I would not be surprised to see the National Hurricane Center highlight a small area of disturbance out here in the southeastern Atlantic main development region to the south and west of the Cabo Verde Islands. The Atlantic Basin is showing signs of coming to life, and it's only a matter of time before the really the peak of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season is here. So make sure to start preparing now while you still can and don't wait till the last minute. So as always though, hope you'll have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali and I'll see you guys back here then tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe everyone and have a fantastic rest of your day. Stay safe.